Welcome to Salon Talks. I am Mary Elizabeth Williams. And you know, if among your resolutions this year you decided that this was going to be the time to get yourself organized, and now you have hit that springtime slump, today we are here to help with the expert Gretchen Rubin. She is the number one best selling author of so many books. I don't have time to name them all, but let's start with The Happiness Project, Happier at Home, Better Than Before. Please forgive me if I don't name them all. Yeah. Um, she is also the host of the very popular Happier podcast. She's now got a brand new book. I love the, I love the name of this, Outer Order, Inner Calm, Declutter and Organize to Make More Room for Happiness. Hi, Gretchen. I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy. I'm happier to be here, absolutely, <laughs> with you today. So. Let's get started with this because I think there are lately in among all of this conversation that we've been having lately about decluttering and cleaning, which is a big movement right now, there are a lot of misconceptions. And you bust one of them right in the foreword of your book, which is the people who say things like, but there's a there's a method to my madness and, and my chaos, it's really not chaos for me, it's contained. And try to push back against the idea of cleaning. And you make the case for why having a decluttered, somewhat more organized life is actually healthier for you. It is, but I will say there are some people, a very small number of people, but they are there who are truly clutter blind. They don't see it, it does not bother them, it does not drain them, they literally are blind to it. My sister Elizabeth, who's the co-host of the Happier Podcast, is like that. Like, she would never close a kitchen cabinet door again in her life if she, did, if she lived by herself. Uh, but the fact is that those folks are pretty rare. For most people, they really do feel more calm, but also more energetic, more focused, even have a bigger sense of possibility when there's outer order, to kind of a crazy degree. Like, it's not, it, seem, it seems so trivial, um, and yet over and over people report that they feel this really disproportionate boost when they get outer order. But what that means is not becoming minimalist no. and I think I got very interested uh, this year when there was a big to do about oh my god people want me to declutter you want me to set all my books on fire yeah, yeah, right yeah, like yeah, it yeah. just goes straight to this like you yeah. want me to throw away yeah. my books you you're you're trying to get me to take away yes. my most prized possession and that's not what this is about at all right so let's so what is decluttering then what does it mean to actually have some outer order well, you're exactly right. There, for instance, there's abundance lovers and simplicity lovers. And, and simplicity lovers are the kind of people who are attracted to minimalism and really like to pull back quite far. And they like bare shelves and empty, empty counters. But then there are abundance lovers. And those are the people who want shelves and shelves full of books. So they want collections. They want profusion and choice and that sort of thing. So outer order and clearing clutter is really about just getting rid of the things you don't use, don't need, don't love. Because even if you want to be left with many things, like, um, you don't want like the cable to nowhere, you know, the like kitchen, the bread maker you haven't used in five years. Those aren't adding any, any value to your life. Those are just kind of clogging things up. And so whether you want to get to a minimalism or simplicity or abundance or whatever it is, it's like getting rid of the stuff that isn't working for you. And we're all going to put that place in a little different. Uh, right. We all have a different sweet spot. We all have a different sweet spot. And that's another thing to remember because sometimes people are like, well, everyone should be like this. When really that's just your preference, you know. Like when a boss says, well, a cluttered desk means a cluttered mind. Well, maybe to you. But that doesn't mean it's true for everyone because some people like to have things out. They like unexpected juxtaposition. If they can lay their hands on whatever they need as soon as they need it, then their system works for them. There's no reason that they have to adapt to your system. It's just your preference. But there are people who say, but I need all my stuff. I yeah. need all of it. You're, gonna ch you're, you're trying to make me take away the stuff that's important to me. And, and you talk about like the, the myth of like, well, someday. Yes. Or someday I might need it. And you talk yeah. about things yes. that you feel like maybe I need it in the past or I yes. need it in the future. Yes. The people who look backwards yeah. and look forward. Yes. How do we reckon with that? Well, I think that's why you really just have to ask yourself, do I use it? Do I need it? Do I love it? Why do I have it? Because once you start thinking like, well, these were suits that I had when I first got out of law school and they were great then, but I have a totally different job now. They're still perfectly good. I was happy when I wore them. Maybe someday my toddler daughters will want to wear them. No, they're really not going to. Uh, maybe someday I'll want to wear them again. Very unlikely. Are you going to want to wear suits from 10, 15 years ago, sometime in the future? When you really relentlessly ask yourself these questions, pretty soon you, you, you kind of surface these um, falsehoods that you're telling yourself, like someday someone will want this, or 
um, maybe this will be handy again. Well, it's like if you haven't used it in such a long time, or can you really foresee a future where you're wearing like a corporate pantsuit? Maybe, maybe not. But it's so much about your identity. Yes. It's so much about, but that's who I was. And yes. you talk about, like, maybe you don't need all five of your college sweatshirts. Yes. Maybe you can get that, that feeling of connection with your former self with one sweatshirt. Right, right. And then you can take pictures of the other ones. I'm a really big believer in taking pictures because usually what people want to hang on to is the memory. And it's like the photograph gives you the memory. You don't have to actually have the item. Um, and again, you're exactly right. When you have mementos or souvenirs, it's better to have just very few and have them be like the perfect example or very saturated, but you don't need a million. Like if you have one seashell from the beach, you don't need 25 seashells from the beach. It's not adding anything more. You just need the one. Same thing with the sweatshirts. Like if you're just keeping them for memory's sake, maybe you don't even need one. Maybe you just need the photographs. Maybe. Now, Gretchen, I'm going to make a confession to mm. you. All right. Here it is. You ready? Yeah. I'm actually really good at decluttering. Okay. I'm actually a pretty clean person. Yeah. I live with three other people. Yes. Who have different styles. Yes. Different standards. Yeah. Um, you talked about this on a blog post recently because yeah. it's not as much in the book. And you said, like, this is something I kind of wish I had talked about in the book. So yes. tell, tell me a little bit about how we live with different styles, um, especially if you're maybe the... Um, Let's call it the clean person. The neat one. The neat one. Let's call it the neat one, sure. Yeah. Um, it's a big source of conflict. And it's funny because when I'm, it turns out my husband and I are very well matched in terms of sort of outer order affinity. And I, I kind of took that for granted. But it turns out when you ask around, it's a very, very so common source of conflict. And I think it's worse between couples than it is between parents and children because um, you feel like they're kind of more doing it on purpose, whereas kids, you, anyway, what the children have, have their own issues that are super annoying as well. And this is um, this is your way of separating from me and I yeah, understand exactly. it's like you are asserting your yeah, independence yes. by leaving your socks in the middle of yeah. the living room floor and yeah. I can kind of work through it psychologically. Yeah. But when it's your partner yeah. um, not throwing away like you know what, I'm not going to get specific, but right, let's, right, just, right, let's right. just say. Asking for a friend. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the one thing I would say, first of all, is really searchingly go through your own clutter and deal with your own clutter. Because if you deal with your clutter, um, sometimes that person gets excited and follows suit. That happens surprisingly often. And often your annoyance with their clutter will go away if you have more control over your own things and you've gotten rid of your own clutter. And it's funny because a lot of people are like, well, but I'm the neat one. I don't really have problems with clutter. And, you know, I'm in your house and I'm like, and in what sense would you describe yourself as the neat one? Because I'm not so much picking up that vibe from you. <laughs> a lot of times, like, our clutter seems completely justified. Like, of course, I've left this project out on the dining room table for a month, but I'm about to finish this at any minute. So I just want to leave, leave this ready for me to do it whenever I want. Your clutter, all those crumbs you left out on the kitchen counter, like, what kind of barbarians are we? Like, you can't, you can't live like that. You know what I mean? But it's like, mm, but your clutter's bugging me. So sometimes it's... it's, it's um, that people are more attuned to other people's mess. Um, and if you get control of your own stuff, a lot of times you feel less annoyance with the way other people are living. Yeah, you can, you can manage those um, open cabinet doors a little bit better. Yes. Maybe. Yeah, and I think that sometimes you do have to say, like, I am the neat one. You know, it's not a, exactly a Felix and Oscar situation, but maybe kind of you're sort of on those poles. And to say, like, I am going to be the one who's going to be closing the kitchen cabinet doors. Like, right. That's, you're, that's not the guy I married or whatever. And figuring out how to do that in the context of um, emotional labor, which yes. is another conversation that's been happening a yeah. lot lately. Like, how do I manage that? And how do I, I coexist harmoniously with people who have different styles. Yes. Well, but I think that you've put your finger on something very important, which is that often people want to say, well, I'm right and you're wrong. But really, it's a matter of preference. And it's sort of, it's sort of like, it isn't a fact that one of us has to convince the other to see things our way. A lot of times, it's just saying, like, you feel comfortable in an invite. To you, it's not important that the bed be made. You don't care if the bed is made. So you don't want to spend your time making the bed because you honestly don't care. I like the bed to be made. But why do I get to be the boss of you and tell you to do something you don't think is important? There's no magic to making the bed. There's no reason to make the bed unless it makes us happier. It makes me happier. It doesn't make you happier. So let's work this out. Now, you could choose to make the bed out of love for me because it's important for me. Um, I could make the bed every day because it's important to me and I don't want to fight about it. 
Um, we could take turns. I mean, there's a lot of solutions, but I think people sometimes are coming from a place of one person's right and one person's wrong. And I mean, don't even get me started in office signage. Like, I want to write a book about office signs, and like, just I always make a beeline for an office kitchen to see what people have done there because they've always done a lot, <laughs> um, a lot of passive ag aggressive Dilbert cartoons. Um, but a lot of times, you see people have very different perspectives or what what is right behavior. Um, a lot of times, people just have very different ideas about what's right behavior, and it it is not the fact that one person's right and everybody else is wrong. It's, they have different ideas. And this is one of the things I really, really appreciate, not just in this book, but in, in all of your books, is that you come at it from that perspective, mm. that there isn't just my way or the highway. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you mm -hmm. follow my rules exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything's going to be okay. <laughs> and what I like about this book, as a, as a somewhat orderly person, yes. is that this is also a book that speaks to people like us, yeah. um, that really talks to if you're someone who maybe gets a little enthusiastic, mm -hmm. maybe over-enthusiastic, yes. mm -hmm. um, you need this book as well. Mm -hmm. So talk right. to me a little bit as someone who maybe maybe it gets a little too gung-ho sometimes mm. well, about throwing things away, yes. about what I can what I can get out of this. Well, as well, it's funny because there's something that I've noticed called the frenzy of the clear. So you know, there's like the rapture of the deeps where you don't want to come up. So the frenzy of the, the clear, call of the you, void. Yeah, the call of the void. Yeah. Um, so there is something, the frenzy of the clear, which is when you just get so, so excited by seeing all this outer order come out that you just start throwing away things kind of willy nilly. And I experienced this with a friend recently because I was helping him clear cl his, like his clutter in his home office. And he was just like getting faster and faster and like, you know, everything was just going, Ch -ch -ch -ch. I really didn't have to, I didn't have to do anything. I was just standing there sort of as moral support. And then I noticed that he threw in an unopened package of padded mailer envelopes. Like if you're going to mail a book to somebody, you use this kind of envelope. And I'm like, well, why did you throw this away? This isn't even opened. And he said, oh, those things never work. And I said, these things always work. Like, why are you throwing this away? He goes, well, I don't, I don't know. I'm just going to throw it away. I'm like, well, I'll take it because I mail books all the time. So sometimes you, you do have to watch out. And then especially if it's not your things, you can start throwing things away. And it is like, especially with children, we don't always know what other people value. It's not always clear to us what's really important. And so you do want to be respectful of other people's property rights and to say, I'm not going to go through your closet and get rid of things until I check with you. Um, because it is, you can get very excited about, and you're like, well, you'll never do it on your own. I need to do this. Um, it's one thing to do it with sort of the plastic containers in the kitchen. It's another thing when you're going through somebody else's co closed closet. Right, and again, it just comes back to really interrogating your process yeah. and yeah. really taking that step and and asking you're asking really the same questions yes. whether whether you're a clutter fan yeah. or right. a cl or a hater um, yeah. But it's really the same process of, do I need this? Is yeah. this giving me, is this, does this have purpose in my life? Have I used it recently? Yes. Yeah. Am, I, am I anticipating something that's never going to happen? That's never going to happen. Um, and we really do the same thing, yeah. whether on whichever side. And you, you've talked in your previous books about these, these four basic yeah. types of personalities. Yes. And yes. I'm like you. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm getting that vibe. Yeah, you're yes. getting it. It doesn't really surprise yeah, 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 yeah. We're We're upholders. Yes. Yeah, well, and upholders are sort of like, I don't understand why you can't just like put your things away as you go. Like, just commit, you know? And it's a, But not everybody's an upholder. Um, it's a small, fringe personality type. Um, but uh, I do think that it is really important to understand how people could do it a different way. Because if you expect everyone to be able to do it your way, then a lot of times they can't. And so you have to think about, well, how would I, how would I, um, uh, how would I uh, tailor it? For instance, so questioners are people who always want to know why. So if you walk up to a, que a questioner and you're like, we need to clean the basement this weekend, it's like they're not going to cooperate. Because it's like, why are we cleaning the basement at all? We never use it. Why are we cleaning this weekend? That's arbitrary day. Like, why do I want to spend my Saturday doing that? I don't get it. But if you're like, you know what, we need to clean the basement uh, this Saturday because we're having the electrical work down in the basement. And if the workmen come and they can't get to where they need to get, we're just going to spend all this money just while they're moving furniture around. If we clean it out, they'll be able to just get in and get out. It'll save us a lot of money. So this is why we're doing it. This is why we're doing it at this time. This is why it makes good sense. So then they'll cooperate. But, but for someone like me, the why is not. I'd be like, okay, 
I guess that's what we're doing this weekend. Yeah. Sounds, like a, great, yeah, sounds, sounds like, like a great great weekend. I look forward to that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you cleaning gotta, a basement? Gotta, when do we get started? I know, I know you need to, you know, you need to go through your audience. No, I remember I woke up in the middle of the night. I was like, oh, the utility closet. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna go down there right now. You know, I've been walking by that utility closet just gazing at it. Um, mm, bring your label maker. I know. Mm, yes. Well, sweet. you and I will get together. Um, <laughs> but you but but that's not true for everyone, as you may have noticed. Not everyone <laughs> is in enthralled. I'm begging my friends to let me help them clear their clutter because it's also like the contact high of seeing all the order emerge without the emotional you know um, drain of making the decisions about your own stuff oh I've done that too. yeah yeah come it, over to somebody it, else's oh, house so and fun. just run the paper shredder it's the great that is thing. a damn good afternoon it pour is. some wine it is. I'm, I'm, like, I'm good to go if you give me as much coffee as I can drink I will do it um, but for not not everybody not finds that gets to that be high. fun. But this is a good thing to remember is if you do not find it fun you probably have a friend who if you said would you like to come? They will. They are being very honest when they say that they would enjoy it. And so bring that person along, because I think for many people, it's easier when it, when they have a companion. It kind of helps them stay focused, and um, there is the help with the grunt work. Like I'll run the shredder while you're going through the bookshelf. I'll hold open the bag while you put in the stuff. Um, and there's just something nice about having somebody keep you company. And also sometimes this is interesting because you were speaking earlier about the emotional connections and like this is my college sweatshirt or here are my these this these clothes that I used to wear sometimes people just want you to witness oh my god Gretchen yeah. I wrote a story about this oh really a friend of mine when she was dying <gasps> we decluttered and it was just oh. about sitting with her and having having someone listen to her say like this is my yeah this is my t-shirt oh my gosh well, this was, was so poignant in that yeah but oh. that's exactly it. It's just yeah. about having someone witness it, yes, and then you yes. can let it go. Then you can let it go. Yeah. Then you can let it go. But like, oh, my mother gave this to me, and I remember we had such a lovely time, and oh, I was so thrilled to have the right, just the right thing. And so you're like, that, that wow, that was really great. And then they can, and then, then they, they can are, release it. Then they can release it. So I don't know if you're like this, but as as an upholder, mm -hmm. I'm I'm very, I think I'm pretty good about letting go of stuff. But mm -hmm. you talk in this book, it's not just about the stuff. Mm -hmm. And what I have is mental clutter. Mm -hmm. I have the, and this you talk about clutter is not just physical. Mm -hmm. It's the stuff. Mm -hmm. It's the projects. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the projects, right? Yes, yes. It's the but how do I declutter from certain actions or mm -hmm. how do I give myself permission to stop watching this TV series that I don't really yes, care yes, about? Yes, yes, yes. Or how do yes. I accept that maybe yes. I'm not going to learn Portuguese? Yes. Or whatever, <laughs> whatever. I don't speak Portuguese because yes. I gave up. Yeah. Uh, but that kind of thing. So can yeah. we talk about that? That clutter yeah. is not just yes. in your physical space. So, And I think more and more, as we have more and more distractions, uh -huh. clutter, is, clutter is distraction, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how do we let go of that? Well, one great thing for many of the things you mentioned is to abandon a project. You have to be willing to just be like, you know what, I'm not going to learn Portuguese. And so I'm not going to keep sort of keep that loop open. I'm not going to keep the Duolingo app on my phone. I'm not going to keep telling myself, oh, yeah, there are those books. And I keep meaning to study them, but I'm not really going to, but maybe I will. And just get them off your shelves and off your conscience because a lot of there is just so much freedom in abandoning a project and it also means that a lot of times this there are things that, you know if i buy a guitar because i'm going to teach myself guitar and then i have it sitting around my house for a year and then i get rid of it and get it to somebody who would actually use it well then that's a positive thing so i get it i get to release myself from the expectation which was probably unrealistic and then put it in the hands of somebody who will make good use of it. And I think most of us really do want to see um, possessions be well used. And a really good argument for getting rid of things like clothes or whatever is, if I am not wearing it, I should get it into the hands of someone who will actually use it, enjoy it, and get good value out of it. Because having it just sit in your own, sit in a closet is not doing anybody any good. But abandoning a project can be surprisingly emotional because then you're really acknowledging to yourself, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, not only am I not going to learn Portuguese, I'm going to give up on learning Portuguese. And for some people, they want to pretend like at any minute they're going to restart. I could be a person who speaks Portuguese, yeah. right? I you could, could be, be I but could, you're but not. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because... Uh, and I'll, I could, you know what, yeah. I've been to Lisbon. It was fine. Yeah, yeah, it was right, fine. right, <laughs> it was right, totally right, fine. right, right, right. No, I mean, and I have a friend who after age 50 taught himself French and is now fluent in French. So it's, you could do it. Sure. You could do it. And that's almost more painful. If it were something like, could I become a soprano opera singer? No, you could not. Could you become a ballet dancer on the stage? No, you could not. 
But hey, Portuguese hey, you could learn. Yeah. You don't know what my dancing skills are. Yeah, 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 I know. But Portuguese you could learn, but are you going to? Right. Um, and one of the things, um, if you are having trouble letting go of a project, is like, is there something more manageable that you can commit to if you find it just impossible to let go of it? Um, like, would I give myself a month to do it every day? And if I don't, then I'll just assume that I'm not. I, I, it's, it's sort of a fantasy ambition of mine. It's not something that I really want to work towards now at this time. It could be that at least some other time you'll decide you want to do it again, but for right now, it's not worth, it's not something that you're actively pursuing. And that brings me to something that I also completely love that I do in my own life. I live and die by my timer mm -hmm. because you are all about, and I, as I am as well, just set yourself like a time limit mm -hmm. for something, especially the stuff that's really hard for you. Mm -hmm. And that is a really great way to manage the stuff and be consistent with it. Yes. So talk about yeah. the, like the one minute, yes. the 10 minute. Yeah, the one minute rule is great. Anything you can do in less than a, t in t in a minute, you do without delay. So if you can hang up your coat or you can print out a document and put it in the right file. Um, and that gets rid of just like those tiny tasks that accumulate on the surface of life, and they're all inconsequential on their own. And literally set the timer. Right, like, right. Just set the timer. Right, 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 right. Um, absolutely. And this way, it's like you don't have to, people are like, I, I, I don't have the time and the energy to deal with clutter. And so this is something that you can do without any extra time or energy. It's, it's literally just as you're walking through your day. You're just like, Oh, I could dump this on the floor, or I could put it on the shelf where it belongs. Okay, I'll just put it on the shelf. I could, uh, I could leave this bottle of pain reliever out on the counter with the lid off, or I could just put the lid back on and put it back in. Okay, it's less than a minute. I'm going to do it without delay. Um, and that's really good, too, because um, what we do every day matters more than what we do once in a while. And so if every day you're doing the, the one-minute rule, then if, you're not, if you could only do a big cleaning like once every six months, if then, it doesn't matter as much because you're doing it consistently. You're creating order and then you're also maintaining order. So before too long, um, it really does start to make a difference. Over and over, people have told me that they've been surprised by how well this works. And along, along the same lines is Power Hour. And this is um, for all those tasks that contribute to clutter, but, but it's like, when are you gonna do them? You know, and because something that's done can be done at any time. It's often done at no time. And so power hour, you keep a list. So let's say I have a pair of shoes that are, I keep them out on the kitchen counter to remind me I need to go to the shoe place. A week goes by, a month goes by, I haven't gone to the shoe place. So I put that on power hour along with things like get the pants hemmed, get that weird light bulb from the hardware store, you know, those things like that. And then just for an hour, an hour seems very manageable, set your timer, um, use your favorite alarm sound to make it fun. And, um, and just try to knock those things off your list. And what people say over and over is like, a couple weekends go by and it is amazing how all these like little tasks just get done. It's just about it's just about consistency. Yeah. Well, this has been a great power half hour. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, I, I, nice. feel, I feel like it's been super productive. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Gretchen, thank you so much. It's also always a pleasure to meet another upholder. Yeah, yeah. Um, the few, <laughs> the but few, the proud. The few, yes. the proud. The proud. Um, the yeah, yeah. The getting stuff done. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Gretchen, the book is called. I want to get the title completely right because it's a big one. Outer order, inner calm, declutter, and organize to make more room for happiness. Don't we all want to be more happy? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I've been really happy talking to you today. Thank you so much. Gretchen. Thank you.